This is John T for the Boxing Voice, chatting to former world title challenger, Rendell Munro. Rendell, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Good to see you. Thanks for having us down your gym tonight. Tell us a little bit what you've been up to recently. I'll talk about your, your boxing career in the past, but you're in your gym, you've got a charge by the looks of it. It looks quite useful. Yeah, yeah, obviously, um, Leanne Bush, obviously. She's originally coming from the Shinfield gym, obviously, that's where I'm from myself. And obviously I started doing a bit of work with her and she's kind of liking what, what's going along. So I've been doing stuff with her for about six months now. And obviously tonight the sparring came down us and I think she looked on point to be fair. You know what I mean? For someone with the minimal experiences she's got, obviously no amateur background. I think she had two unlicensed fights, waiting for her first pro fight. So I think we do, we're doing well really. Wow, well that's really interesting because I didn't know that. So for the viewers who haven't just seen what I've watched, she's just been inspiring hard with Rachel Bull who's out to fight for a world title, just beat Shannon Courtney, and Ellis Hopkins, who's highly touted, just gone pro herself, and they've both got, well, Ellis in particular has got a really decorated amateur career, and she held your own, um, so that's really good, well done to you. Um, right, let's talk a little bit about you, so what? You, when did you retire? Um, I think it would have been about six years ago, got to be about six years ago now. Last so, yeah. fight, was it against Josh Warrington? Yes, yes, yes. Excellent. I, I remember getting up, I'm sure, was it your first world title fight? Were you in Japan or somewhere? And yeah, I was yeah, up at like well, 7, 8 in the morning. Fair, that's, that's the only one I ever had. Was it? Were they not title fights against Quick? Because you got a draw with Scott No, Quick? no, they, they, it, was, it was a WBA interim title, I think it was, something like that. <sighs> obviously, I, obviously, I only got to fight uh, Nishoka for a world title. I didn't get really to fight nobody else. Obviously, the, the, the world titles around, they, they weren't willing to give me an opportunity. So, it's one of them, do you know what I mean? I think... It's like I always tell people the truth. I think I left the sport not because I wasn't good enough. I think I lost the love for the sport as in the goalposts were always getting moved around every time I'm trying to chase them down. And the opportunity for me was not to become a big money spinner. It was to become a world champion. And I think with the way things were going, I wasn't going to get that opportunity. And like I say, I've, I've, I, anybody who's seen the last couple of fights for me could know that that wasn't the true render. I think I'd just gone there, kind of half-hearted, lost the love of the sport and kind of... I think me and Jay had the agreement that when it ain't the same Rendell, it's time to call it a day, and I think that was the time for me. No, that's fair enough, and I think for, for anyone who's not aware, if you only had a few defeats, Scott Quigg being one, but you drew with him, yeah. Josh Warrington, Lee Selby, they're either ex-world champions or that's current it. world champions, so <laughs> there's no shame in that. No, that, no. that night then that you had in Japan, was that like your best night? Um, yes, I know, I think it was my best opportunity if I said for myself, but if I'm honest, I think I told a lot of people that I had a few complications in the fight I think um, you look at it as in obviously I made weight good I think in the fight it was about the five, fifth or sixth round I think I always remember going back to the corner I sat down and normally anyone who watched any of my fights could know that I normally turn up the steam obviously after that where well, this time around I stood up in the corner and, and it was like my calves just just went really tight like something, something's not right here something's not right so I remember after that round coming back to Jay and I said to Jay you know what Jay I don't think I'm going to win you know but I ain't going to let him stop me and, 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 and I didn't, you know what I mean? I think I, think I gave him a good, what can I say, a, a good showing of myself for someone who's just come up to world title level in there with one of the best in the world, who's Nishioko, who's knocking him out, you know what I mean? Been a world champion for how long? Not lost in how long, so, you know what I mean? And I think I'll always remember coming home on the plane, obviously, with Mike Shinfield, obviously my manager at the time, he just said to me, he said, Rendell, I reckon you proved yourself too good for your own good there. And I was like, well, what, what, what do you mean by that? And and I think he was right, because obviously the opportunities after that we went scarce, to be fair. Yeah, fair play. Now look, at the time, we didn't have loads of world champions. In a few years after, we started getting a lot more, and boxing's seen a bit of a boom recently. But I remember at the time, you had a bit of a cult following, because you, were you still working when you were fighting for a world title yeah, around yeah, that yeah. time? Yeah, obviously, I was, a, I was a dustbin man. I think I just just stopped work, which I didn't want to. I think they told me, look, Rindle, you've got to concentrate a bit more on the boxing now, so you need to stop work. So I just stopped work for the world title fight. You know what I mean? Apart from that, I was working all the way through um, English champion, Commonwealth champion, European champion, all the way through as a bin man, as my daytime job. Yeah, it felt like you were like the guy next door, and that's why I think where you had so many fans come from that, it was almost like, well, hang on a minute, we've got a guy here who's going to be fighting for the world title, British, we're behind him, but yet he's a big man in the daytime. That's it, that's it. <laughs> Great story. So, so nowadays, moving forward now, you've obviously, we've talked about your gym. Do you work all the time in the gym? Or No, no, obviously, um, anybody who knows Rendell was always, a, it was, for me, was about working with the community, working with the young generation, and I run my own school now, working with kids excluded from mainstream school. It's Excellent. called... Um, triple skills in the community, you know what I mean? So it's kind of working with 
I wouldn't say they're bad kids. They're just kids who just kind of need channeling in a different direction and school isn't for them. And I always say, for me, I was one of them lads. I didn't like school. I didn't think it had any any, any meaning for me. Do you know what I mean? But my, my little breakthrough came because I enjoy boxing so much. Whereas a lot of these kids now, these opportunities are very scarce for them now. Do you know what I mean? Everything's unaffordable. You know what I mean? The, the, the youth clubs are disappearing. Boxing gyms are disappearing. So for me, it was always one of them, like, to get back and... Show kids that hard work can pay, you know what I mean? It don't mean that if you don't end up leaving school with big, big GCSEs and a massive education that you ain't going to go nowhere because there still is ways to go. And I obviously, I promote to them that you need a little bit of education because there is a time at the end when you do need to go back. And obviously, I did go back. Obviously, 30-odd years old, it cost me £3,500 to go back and get a decent education for myself. But I would say is I'm a role model to the generation now to say that, look, hard work does pay, whether it's on the bins, whether it's boxing, whether it's football, if you're determined enough to do it, it can be achieved, you know what I mean? I always tell a lot of people, especially like, I, I like to go to a lot of amateur shows, speaking to the young kids there, because same again as an amateur, I wasn't a decorated amateur, I was just a young lad who just loved to fight, you know what I mean? I always remember I used to get a telling off after a fight, I used to say to my trainers, my uncle, don't worry man, I'll be back in the gym on Monday, no, no dramas, you know what I mean? So I think I had 40 fights, 130. You know what I mean? And then went on to pro, went on to be one of the best in the world because I just wanted to do something. It's a great story, mate, and it's really good to hear you giving back to the community. So do you bring these lads that, 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 um, that you look after, they come down here as yeah, well? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like you say, they, they come down here once or twice a week. You know what I mean? I do, like, I go into, into schools as well, doing, like, boxing stuff. I do, role, um, like, role model talking. I do speeches and things like that because I always say, like say, my, my biggest thing, everyone laughs about it, but I always say, if we ain't looking after the kids now, who's going to look after me when I get old? Do you yeah, know what I mean? True. So. Excellent stuff. Well, look, thanks for having us, Rendell, and hopefully we'll pop down and see you again soon, yeah? Definitely. Great definitely. catching up, mate. So if you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the like, subscribe, and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the patreon.com backslash the boxing voice. We have tons of exclusive from Border Wars, from Title, betting shows, the list goes on and on and on. But in addition to that, if you guys have questions for fighters, trainers, and promoters, this is where you can submit them. We will run out, get these questions answered, and put it back on the show just for you guys. Appreciate it. Peace.